Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? It is good to be with you. I apologize for my tardiness, uh, trying to get some things set up for our um, people who listen on the uh, toll-free. Let's uh, begin our worship with the ringing of the church bell. to share some announcements with you. Today is Special Offerings uh, Sunday here at Lost Creek. We're collecting loose change in our joyful noise buckets for the uh, emergency heating fund. And at McCoysville, we are collecting for Meals on Wheels. I do want to uh, remind everyone the discretionary fund has been used uh, a lot this winter. And so if you would like to make an extra donation to the discretionary fund, you can make out a check to Lost Creek Presbyterian Church and just put in the memo line, discretionary fund. If you are donating online, uh, there's a place for you to put a note or a memo. Just put discretionary fund on that. And thank you you to everyone for their support. And also another way you can support the discretionary fund is buying uh, wise gift cards from Tom Heckman. Uh, Just give him a call and make arrangements to to purchase from him. McCoysville session will meet uh, after... After worship this morning at 11 a.m. down at McCoysville, uh, the, the McAllisterville Ministerium has their continuing community Lenten services tonight at 7 p.m., we hope. Uh, more problems from Facebook there, but we uh, hopefully we'll get that settled. Uh, and uh, Pastor Kevin Brophy of the Brown St. John's United Methodist Churches will be preaching on the subject, The Gospel According to Food. And that'll premiere at 7, and then you can watch it uh, any time after that. You can also dial the uh, sermon by phone number and hear the, uh, the, the entire service uh, by your telephone. The Lost Creek Session will meet Wednesday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. I am planning a new members class uh, this spring for Lost Creek and McCoysville. And so far, I've had three people express interest. If anybody else is interested, whether you are worshiping with us in person or worshiping with us um, by Facebook, uh, please let me know. Uh, during the season of Lent, we are collecting for the one great hour of sharing. Uh, it is used uh, for three of the denomination's uh, special projects. One of them is Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. And uh, we've all heard of the devastating impact of the winter weather on Texas and the South. Uh, And because we have made donations in the past, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is already on the ground working with uh, local response teams to uh, figure out how we can best uh, help the people through that situation. So that's one way your One Great Hour Sharing uh, works. Um, So throughout the season of Lent, you can get one of these fishy boxes and uh, put money in it. Uh, once you put it together, it will stay puffed out like a puffer fish unless you push in on the sides and crimp the tail. And if you do those two actions, it'll stay looking like a regular fish. Um, you can also pick up one of these uh, world maps that has some examples of how uh, the offering is used around the world. And on the back are little activities and prayers that you can use each day during the season of Lent, uh, both in your to learn more about one great hour sharing and also to uh, determine what you're going to feed your fish. So these are available um, at Lost Creek and McCoysville. Uh, at Lost Creek, they're in the uh, uh, entrance way as you come in. At Lost Creek, we are collecting paper towels for the food pantry and activity books for the nursing homes. Are there any other announcements? Uh, Bible study starts this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to uh, join us, you can meet in person wearing a face mask or you can join us by Zoom. If you need the Zoom link, please let me know. This is open to anybody who uh, has been worshiping with us. 
Hearing no other announcements, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our meditation music. Thank you, Cheryl. That was lovely. Normally, during the season of Lent, we uh, have a, a, um, a cross with six candles in it, and they're all lit, and then we put one out each uh, week as we get closer to Jesus' death on the cross. Our uh, Lenten materials for this year uh, invite us instead to light a cross or light a candle each Sunday as we get closer to uh, Good Friday, to uh, remember that it is through Christ's death on the cross that light and life are brought into our lives. And so I'd ask um, Patty to come and to, to help us with this, and she's going to pour some water into uh, the baptismal font here. In this season of Lent, we reflect on our journey of faith with Christ remembering God's covenant and the sign of the rainbow. God will never again destroy the earth by flood. Water, which was once a way of destruction, is now a way to new life through baptism. We light this candle on the first Sunday of Lent, remembering God's faithfulness through the sign of his covenant. Let us pray. As the days lengthen and the rivers fill with spring waters, dear God, 
May we be filled with your love. Let wellsprings of living water spring up in us. In the name of Christ, with whom we journey towards the cross, we pray. Amen. So let us uh, wish everyone peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. And go ahead and uh, wish peace be with you to everybody. Uh, and we have uh, people from... I have uh, people from uh, Facebook land uh, wishing you peace. Uh, Noreen and Diane and uh, Chris and Lindsay, um, Kathy H, Debbie, Nat, Heidi, Ann and Barry, uh, Linda, Tessa, Lowell, uh, Diane. Hi, Diane. She's from North Carolina. Uh, Jackie, Melinda, Sean. Hi, Sean. Thanks for helping out at the food pantry yesterday. Rose, Jerry, thank you for uh, plowing the uh, drive yesterday. Alicia, Melinda, Robin, good to see you again. Uh, she joined us for our um, Lucy show last night. And that's uh, some of the people who are, oh, and Pat and Max, good to see you. Hazel, Reese. Uh, so that's some of the people worshiping with us. And uh, we have some people listening on our toll free and peace be with you as well. Let's uh, join together in singing softly. Uh, baptized in water, we'll sing two verses and it's to the tune morning has broken. scripture lesson today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 10. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Now I would remind you brothers and sisters of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received in which also you stand through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I have handed on to you as of first importance what I turn, in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, or Peter, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. The Lord always blesses the reading the hearing of his holy word. So 
So uh, we are entering the season of Lent. It is 40 days plus six Sundays leading to uh, the celebration of Easter. Uh, it's meant to remind us of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness as uh, he was tempted by Satan, preparing to enter into ministry. And so it is a time for us to prepare uh, ourselves both to remember Christ's death on the cross and also to celebrate his resurrection. And so since it is the uh, season of Lent, let's talk about the three wise men. Um, <laughs> I think it's uh, interesting to note, uh, we, we call them the three wise men or the three kings. The uh, Greek word is magi, from which we get the word magic. Uh, the magi were wise men in king's courts who were to give wisdom and guidance to the kings in their decisions. And one of the ways that they did that was through astrology. You know, looking up at the stars, looking at the way the planets moved within the different houses of, of, the, of the stars and making uh, observations that they hoped would help their king make wise decisions. Now, in the Old Testament, God warns his people to have nothing to do with astrologers. After all, why would you go to a created thing for wisdom and guidance when you can go to the creator instead? And yet, notice that in the story of the wise men, God does not wait until they give up their astrology before God comes to them and, and shows or reveals to them the gift of his son, the savior of the world. Instead, God actually meets the wise men where they are. They are astrologers, and so God speaks to them through the stars. And uh, at, uh, in December, we talked about one of the possible ways that that was done, the uh, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn uh, in 7 uh, BC that occurred three different times. And the first time was in the east, and the last time was in the southwest of Jerusalem. Uh, that's where it appeared in the sky, uh, where Bethlehem was in relationship to Jerusalem. So maybe that was the way that God uh, got their attention and said, something special is happening, and the king is being born, and you need to go and see. And so God meets them where they are, speaks to them, in a language that makes sense to them and draws them to the Savior. And that's something important for us to remember, that God meets us where we are. In our scripture lesson this morning, uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and he says, For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That is the gospel in a nutshell. That is what the cross is all about, that Jesus died for our sins. But what does that mean? How does it work? In our Bible study on Wednesday night, uh, we are going to be, I get my notes here, we are going to be uh, listening to some videos by uh, Kenneth Bailey, who was raised in the Middle Eastern culture and has learned a lot of their traditions and brings a lot of that experience to uh, his understanding of the, of the scriptures, especially the Gospels. And Kenneth Bailey points out that the Apostle Paul, in his letters to the churches, uh, shares six different metaphors for what it means that the cross brings salvation from sin. So the first one is a court is a court of law uh, metaphor or a, an experience from human life in the court of law. Uh, in Romans 3.24, he writes, they are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That word justified is a legal term. It describes a prisoner standing before a judge and the prisoner is found guilty of wrongdoing and the judge, to uphold justice, has to declare a punishment on the prisoner. But then after declaring a judgment, the judge stands up, takes off his judge robes, walks down, stands beside the prisoner, and says, I take the punishment of this prisoner upon myself. 
So justice is meted out, but the prisoner is set free because the judge takes the punishment himself. And that is one of the ways that the cross addresses sin, that through our sins we are separated from God for eternity. But then Jesus takes that judgment of sin, of death, upon himself for our sake and sets us free from sin. A second metaphor is a prisoner of war. Uh, when Rome did battle in ancient days, occasionally one of the important people in the battle would get captured like a general. And so Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 7 says, In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of God's grace. And that word redemption is, refer is referring to what the Romans would do if an important person was captured in battle. And they would go through a process of negotiation with the enemy to release the uh, imp important person. And that whole process is a process of redemption, of setting that person free and bringing them back home. And the cross is like that sometimes. Sometimes the cross, in the, in, the, uh, in the cross, God is going through an entire process, not just the cross itself, but all of salvation history that led up to it and all the actions God takes after that. It is a process by which God sets us free from slavery so that we can return home to God. Uh, the third is uh, the image of a slave being set free. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 6.20, Paul writes, You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And that word bought is a reference to a particular thing that a slave could do in order to free themselves from slavery. So a slave had opportunities to earn money on the side. They could go to a bank and start depositing that money and saving it up and eventually save up enough money to buy their freedom from their master. Now, here's the trick. The banks were in the temples of the various Roman gods. And when you did this, uh, when you finally accumulated enough money, the bank would call the master and the master would come in and the, and the bank would say, this slave has been bought by the god of this temple. Here is the price. You your uh, fee has been satisfied. You may go. And the, the slave has now been bought as a slave of the god and is now free to go. In a similar way, the cross is like that. Through the cross, God buys us for himself, setting us free from slavery to sin, and now we become slaves to God or servants of God. The uh, fourth metaphor Paul uses is a sacrifice on the altar. We've probably uh, have images of this, you know, they t the uh, Jews taking a lamb and sacrificing it on the altar to God. Uh, it's important to note that when they do this uh, for sin, they are not doing it because uh, that uh, lamb is being punished for their sins. Instead, the image is, I owe God a perfect life. I should live in obedience to God's commands all the time. I should always put God first in my life. But I don't. I'm not perfect. And so I take a perfect lamb, a lamb without blemish, and I offer it to God in my place. And that sacrifice is giving that lamb to God, its perfection in place of mine. And you can already imagine how that applies to the cross. We, because of our sins, cannot offer God a perfect life. And so Jesus offers his perfect life in our place as a sacrifice to God. He does what we cannot do. And we receive um, unity with God because of that. The, uh, and uh, in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul writes, Our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. The uh, fifth example is the battlefield. 
And uh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 54, when this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. It's describing a battle scene in which you have become victorious over the enemy. And it talks about how the cross is God's way of achieving victory over sin and over death and giving us eternal life with our Father in heaven. And the final metaphor is the sage in his, or wise person in his classroom. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 1, 23 and 24, we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We understand what Paul's talking about here. Jesus dying on a cross does not seem powerful. You know, he was arrested. He was beaten. He was crucified. It doesn't seem very wise. How does it possibly help anybody when Jesus is killed on the cross? And yet, Paul tells us that, in fact, it is an example of God's power and an example of God's wisdom. Because despite the fact that it doesn't make sense to the world, it actually does set us free from sin and restore us to God. So these are different metaphors that the Apostle Paul uses to help us understand how the cross, um, how Jesus' death on the cross brings us salvation from sin. You know, there's been a lot of argument throughout history. You know, theologians fighting with each other, denominations fighting with each other, members within a congregation fighting with each other over the fact, shouldn't there be just one explanation for how Jesus' death on the cross sets us free from sin. And I've got my explanation, and you've got your explanation, and they're not the same, so one of us can't be right. And yet, what we need to remember is God meets us where we are. God, um, whatever our situation is, God speaks to us in that situation. And those various metaphors, those various ways of understanding how the cross works, speaks to us in different situations. So, for example, 1 Corinthians 15, 8 and 9, our scripture lesson today, the Apostle Paul talks about how Christ died, how he was raised again, how he started appearing to different people. And he ends by saying, last of all, as to one untimely born, Jesus appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. So how is Paul feeling here? Which of those metaphors do you think addresses how Paul is feeling? When I think about it, I think um, maybe it has to do with that courtroom. And Paul sees himself before God the judge, and he realizes how he has offended God by arresting his people, persecuting them, even leading to their executions, there is absolutely nothing he can do uh, to get out from underneath the punishment that he deserves. And yet God, through Christ, takes off those judges' robes, stands beside Paul, and says, I take the punishment upon myself, and I redeem him and set him free from sin, and he is now a member of my family. And um, I think all these different metaphors can speak to us in different situations. The prisoner of war, you know, the ideas, the focus is on the process. And sometimes we look at our lives and we begin to see little ways that God was at work in our lives, bringing us to faith in Jesus Christ and receiving that gift of salvation. And we continue to see the ways that God uh, blesses our lives and makes us his children, setting us free from sin. We see that process involved. Or maybe we're struggling with an addiction. We feel like we are enslaved to this thing. And there's no way we can set ourselves free. But then we have this message. 
that God in Jesus Christ has paid the ransom for us, has set us free and redeemed us. Or perhaps uh, the, the uh, image of the Lamb speaks to us. We look at our lives and we're trying to be good people, but we know over and over again, we turn away from God and we do our own thing. We are not perfect. And what grace it is to know that Jesus Christ, the perfect one, gave his life to God in our place. And because of that, we are now called children of God. Or perhaps that image of victory really speaks to you. Perhaps you've been living your life in fear of death. If I die, what happens next? And knowing that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, sin and death have been conquered. And we know the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that can help us not be afraid of death but know that Christ has won the victory for us and we can live victorious lives. Or perhaps the sage uh, speaks most to us. We look at the world, the way it thinks, and it seems like truth and justice mean nothing. It seems the only thing that matters to the world is uh, power or popularity, and people make decisions based on that. And we look at the world and we see it's not working. It really isn't power and it really isn't wisdom. And then we look at what God has done through Jesus Christ, through his grace and his love expressed through Christ's death on the cross and through his resurrection. And we begin to see the way it transforms people's lives and the lives of communities and the lives of the world. And there we see true wisdom. There we see true power. And so that speaks to us most. How, wherever we are, God is reaching out to us in that moment. And God is finding a way to speak to us the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. Uh, if you are reading our These Days um, devotionals, on Friday, you uh, read an article by contributor Rachel uh, Srubis uh, from Arizona talking about the color beige. And she points out in her, in her devotional that the astronomers Carl Glazebrook and Ivan Baldry back in 2009 wrote a report in which if you averaged the colors of all 200,000 galaxies that we can see into one color, it would be a sort of a beigey color. They, they preferred to call it cosmic latte, latte, cosmic latte. And that doesn't sound very beautiful, does it? But if you look at our picture of all the different galaxies in the, in the uh, skies, you see all sorts of different colors, don't you? Within that cosmic latte, there is all sorts of beauty. The Apostle Paul tells us that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be summed up in the words, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. But within that promise, Christ died for our sins, is a whole beautiful range of ways that God is at work in our lives and in the world to set us free from sin, to draw us back into the family of God, to give us the ability to live our lives with courage. Let us rejoice in that and allow God to speak to us wherever we are right now. Amen. So this morning as we turn to the Lord in prayer, uh, we are praying for... This week, Central Presbyterian Church and the Reverend Scott Bowerman. That's not right. We're praying for Dickinson Presbyterian Church. And uh, they are in Carlisle, and their pastor is Neil McCulloch, who is a commissioned ruling elder. And he's also our vice moderator elect of the Presbytery of Carlisle. So let us rejoice, give thanks, and pray for the witness of this congregation. May God's spirit encourage, strengthen, and shape them 
as they love and serve in the name of Jesus Christ. Along with um, praying for Dickinson, uh, we also want to celebrate some very important people. Uh, today is uh, Mary's birthday and Ruth's birthday. On Monday, Louise has a birthday. And then on Saturday, Rachel has a birthday. And next Sunday, Carla has a birthday. So those are some of our uh, VIPs. Are there any others that we know of? If you are celebrating a birthday this week or an anniversary this week at home, know that uh, we are rejoicing with you as well. Um, let us uh, sign, Happy Birthday, God Bless You. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, God Bless You. Happy Birthday to you. Of course, we will uh, share specific prayer concerns and joys uh, at the end of our service. Uh, if you are worshiping with us at home, then I invite you to use Facebook Messenger to send us any particular uh, concerns you have. Uh, are there any general joys that we want to celebrate today? I'm grateful for Jerry. He came in and uh, pushed away the, uh, the snow on the parking lot so we'd have a place to park today. And uh, grateful to uh, Sean for going down to McCoysville and helping with the food pantry distribution yesterday. We had, uh, I think, eight or nine uh, people that we were able to serve. And it's amazing how much uh, food and groceries you can pack into a little car. <laughs> Any other joys? Yes. That's right. We've had a 16-fold uh, growth in our worship attendance today. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you to Barb for coming down off the mountain. And uh, she was our organist, our uh, candle lighter, and our bell ringer all at once uh, last week. Uh, and I'm thankful that everybody stayed home and stayed safe and that we have the technology to be able to worship together even when we can't be safely in the same building. Are there any general concerns we want to lift up to the Lord today? Yes. Yep. All those in the South who are struggling uh, with water and struggling with heat and with food. Anything else? Let's uh, bring our joys and our concerns to the Lord in prayer. Uh, each of our petitions ends, Lord, in your mercy. I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Almighty God, remember the covenant you have established with your people. Preserve us by your mercy and lead us to live mercifully with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out the gift of water for all your creation. Provide clean water for those who lack it. Curb the use of those who waste it, and guide the efforts of those who seek to conserve it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Extend your gift of renewal to all nations, where leaders exert overwhelming power and where militaries exert unjust might. Deliver your sheltering peace to people who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver your gift of healing to all who suffer. Make well those who are ill and bring wholeness to those who struggle with brokenness. Hear especially the prayers we lift to you in the silence of this time. God, open our eyes to see your face in every person. Let us see the ways we are connected with all of creation. May we, as your church, together seek love, justice, and peace with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And to your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who also taught us to, to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's uh, sing together two verses of Beneath the Cross of Jesus. And our postlude this morning will be performed by Max Henry, uh, playing Jesus Calls Us. I had you down for attendance twice, Larry. <laughs> Let's um, do our praise song. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. those songs before worship <laughs> and uh, let's uh, stand for the benediction 
And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.